Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new art journaling tutorial, but this art journaling tutorial is specifically prompted by my weekly creative prompt. It's called Sunday Nights Motivational Mondays Creative Prompt. And what I wanted to do this week is encourage people to use old products. So I decided to basically look around my room and find old products and old products that are at least five years and older if you don't have that then three years and older two years and older basically nothing new from something that just came out these are products that you buy in the store and that I paid money for them but I basically have them sitting there and I don't know if you watched my video this past January about things I wish I would have not bought because I don't use it. So I challenged myself to take out those things, even though there's all these amazing new products, and I'll show you some of the old ones over here. I challenged myself to go ahead and use them. One of the things that I spoke about is Distress Ink. And these products are amazing, and I literally don't reach out to them. I love the Distress Oxide rings, and I reach to them a lot, but Distress inks. Why don't I do have them? I don't have them all. I have only a few. So why not use them? So I actually took out stuff that I knew I could use. I even found an old stencil that I haven't even opened from Dilutions. Like it just becomes really, really crazy that I start wanting to buy all the new products without having to use the old ones. So I challenged myself this week and that was the prompt for this week. And if you do challenge yourself and create something with the prompt, please hashtag it at Karen's Creative Prompt and share it on Instagram or Facebook so that way I can see it and I can share it. So the first thing I did is I took this Dilutions journal. This is an old journal. I mean, it's not really that old, but it's old enough that I figured, okay, this would fit under that category. Then I went and I got a bunch of washi tape. There's a Tim Holtz one, some other ones I got, I think, I don't even know where I got this one, maybe Prima, Joann's, I have no idea. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them in the middle to kind of seal the page. This is a tip that I gave in my our journaling most common mistakes that you do with our journaling and not sealing a bound book it's a big one just because things can kind of go in between the cracks of the of the journal the seams now I love washi tape and I don't even know why I don't use it more often because I love creating texture with it so that's what I'm going to basically do I'm going to create texture and put it in my background and just do that so this challenge is specifically about using old products. I want you to stay tuned on my channel because I am also coming up with another set of videos that will be specifically related to using recycled products and products that are inexpensive. So that's also coming up and it will be related to a different prompt that I'm having for that challenge. So now I'm just putting strips of this one. So I'm going to use this one by Tim Holtz. But I just want to warn you that some of these products might not be available anymore. And that is the point of using old products that you're not buying them, you're seeking out what is already in your stash. Now, let me just finish this here. I just wanted to kind of create some texture. And that's it. So any type of thing, you could even take something like a stamp and create texture in the background that works as well so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of gesso this is heavy white gesso and the good thing about gesso is like I mean the good thing about this is that it's also been out for a long time so that kind of fits into my category even though I use this a lot I use white gesso a lot but it does fit in the category of old so that's why I am using it today my idea for this journal was also to create something really quickly. Last time I created a journal, it just was a really long journal, a really long video. And I figured that people might not want to watch such long videos. So I'm really trying to, even though I'm doing real time videos, that I'm really trying to cut that down. I find that I want to give you so much information that I end up like making these really long videos, but then people don't actually watch the whole thing. So it kind of is a two-way sword because I want to give you so much information but at the same time if you're not watching it then I might as well just create shorter videos so this is going to be a quick art journal with some old product as you can see I am just adding the gesso 
kind of whitewashing it on top if you want to really blend it properly or whitewash it you can just add a little bit of water spray a little bit of water and then it will really you know blend it well and I'm just adding it in in some areas so I am doing a very very light wash and if I see that it's too much, I either put water or I can wipe it off with a wipe. But I'm just doing it. This is called whitewashing, okay? And there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to dry this. And then I'm going to add more texture. Okay, so I took three colors that I have from Distressed Inks. I don't actually have that many, truthfully. I think I might have five of them. I know people bought them all around, but I felt like I wasn't doing stamping, so I really never used them as much. But I'm thinking, why don't I use them as much? And I took a blending tool. I really wanted to take this new blending tool, which is from scrapbook.com, which is like has like a dome shaped. I'll link this below just in case you guys want to get it. But truthfully, I'm going to use the old one just because it is old. And I am going to get the colors. I'm telling you, I have Warm Lipstick, Spice Marmalade, and Rusty Hinge. These are colors that I love and resonate with. And I'm going to do that. So I am using these. These are actually from my Distress Oxide inks. But they can be used here as well. So I'm going to use this one for the oranges and this one for the pink. So I actually don't know what I'm planning or what I'm doing, truthfully. I just want to add some of this to the background to add the color. This is a beautiful color and I'm going to kind of go between them. They're very similar, I think, the Spice Marmalade and the Rusty Hinge. It's just a difference in the distress of them and just blend them together. What I want to add is the Worn Lipstick. Let's see how that works. I love the combination of pinks and oranges. I just find that they're beautiful. So. I am not huge on leaving white space. I've spoke up, spoken about that before. I know that people do leave white space, but I'm the type who loves kind of covering my page in general everywhere. So I am going to do that. But you don't have to. You can leave white space if you want to. That's up to you. And usually what I like doing is I like movement of a page. So I am having this up and down movement on my art journal page there we go so now that i've done this of course knowing the properties of distress inks i really want to add a little bit of water to create beautiful splatters and kind of getting that distressed thing out of it so i'm going to kind of spray because i can and i love the effect that the distress you see how it actually starts acting up and creates those splatters then i'm going to take a paper towel and just dab it all out so it's very similar properties to distressed oxide inks the difference is that the, the distress ink have just dye ink in it while the distressed oxide have pigments but look at the cool effect that it does i love it okay so i'm going to how cool is that? So it looks very, very neat. I love that. I love the way it creates it. And it's just so, so pretty. Now, I'm going to go with, I have a mini black one. And I'm going to go with the stencil that I said I found. This is Dilusions Block. Small stencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this texture now on it. So the key with our journaling is basically creating layers on top of layers on top of layers on top of layers so and as you can see it looks really really cool oh i love this okay so this is what i mean about getting your old products out you have to get your old products out they are amazing as well don't just think that the new ones have to be used so again i'm going with the same movement as i did before and trying to kind of recreate that movement going up and down so I am leaving kind of a blank space like a white space but it's going in this direction right so the bottom is kind of being left blank it's not white space because it's not actually white but it's considered white space in the sense of not having something there now I'm going to just use them to create a border and 
you can also, I mean, I could also grab it like this and it will create a darker border around. So that looks cool. It's very distressed. So there we go. Now we have a background. Look how quickly it is with these uh, these products. Now I literally went like literally digging for stuff, as I said, and I found like a literally a mounted stamp. I don't even know where this is from. It's from from my old days that not that I did card making, but I just thought I could do stuff. So I found some old stamps, some of them from Prima, some of them so it's like this is really old. So let's see what I can do with this. This is basically going to be for stamping. So you could use our, I could use archival ink or I can even use this distress ink. I'm thinking to use archival ink because this one is a little bit already dry. My archival ink is old, so that technically fits under this category. And the way I like holding my stamps is this way. And as I said, just so you know that this stamp might not be available, but it just just as I said you could just get yourself another stamp and create texture it doesn't really have to be this particular stamp it just adds like more distress to the background now let's see if I can use this one I think I want to use this kind of clock looking thing let's see how it looks there we go that's cool right there's also a butterfly there but I think I want to just go with the clock I like to represent kind of time now I find it harder to work with wooden stamps, but truthfully, it's just for this for this for this idea. I really wanted to, as I said, use something that is old. So a very distressed page, really, really, really quick one. It's really cool to see. I even pulled out these stamps. These are Unity stamps, and it, they have like really nice sayings. So I really want to say, like, for example, like it's about art. Art makes me happy and things like that. Again, I do not know if this is going to be available. Okay, this is art makes me happy. I do think I'm going to have to maybe, maybe I'll stamp it down here just because it, or here because otherwise you will not be able to see it. So let me stamp that here. And if you want to make sure that it comes out properly, look, I have this old setting mat. I don't know if you remember those from We Are Memory Keepers or Memory and just it will give me like a good impression that way. Art makes me happy. How beautiful is that? So what else could I add here? So I have the sentiment and do I really need to add something? I feel like it needs to add like something here. So let me just think about it. Okay, so I went digging through my stash for a focal point because I felt like it needed something here. And I found actually something really cool from Prima from many, many, many years ago. I would say 10 years. So again, I don't know if this can be av is available. I will look for things that are similar. But this is a resist canvas stuff. It's resist canvas embellishments. So what it is is that they're made out of canvas. They're kind of stick. They have a sticker in the back and or you can glue them and what it is that when you add color to them there's a resist part to them so let me show you how cool this is so i am going to make the butterfly let's say in pink okay and i'm going to take this and when i am cover it and then add a little bit of water and when i rub it it already has this distress design behind it so now I want to see, I'm not sure if I like this pattern as much. I want to see if there's another pattern that I might like more. So I want to show it to you again. Oops. It has leaves. It has different things. Let's see. And then I can decide which pattern I want. Okay. Oh, I like this. Yeah, I like this one with the flowers. So as you can see, it's really cool. And it can be added here. Now what I can do also is... Add a little bit of black to the edges to kind of make it stand out. And I could add more than one butterfly, but let me just see how this one looks. So this looks really cute on here. I wonder if this one stands out more. Maybe I should have done it. I don't know. I'm wondering. Maybe I should have done it in a different color. So you start kind of playing around with things and realizing that maybe you should have done it in a different color. You could even add. I can add two butterflies to it. Okay, that's good. I can even add one other little one maybe i'll make this one in orange just because oh this one is so cool it has actually writing on it so it matches perfectly so i can even like actually layer them why did i not think of that okay so maybe i'll layer this one that will look really cool okay so i you know like as i'm doing as i'm creating i start coming up with ideas that i want to do 
and that's usually what happens there we go so I can layer this too and uh, maybe layer some more all right let's see I'm going to create one last one so basically I created four butterflies can be used for my art journal and oh this one is a bit got a bit too dark but that's okay okay so there we go now all I have to do is glue them and truthfully like you could create these out of paper and use the distress inks to create this to create the, the designs it doesn't have to be like these obviously I found these and they're cool so I'm gonna use some soft gel just to glue them and I'm just gluing them kind of this one I'm gonna glue fully but the other ones I kind of glue just in the middle so the wings can kind of pop up a little bit and obviously use a palette knife not your fingers I'm just kind of using my fingers because I'm rushing through things now I'm just going to add a pen and kind of just add some markings on the butterfly to kind of kind of make it a little bit more realistic this is a football mark a pen from Ranger I'm not being exact because I don't want it to look perfect I'm gonna I like creating lines on my border that makes it like more distressed this pen is also like pretty old so it kind of fits into the category and uh, so yeah art makes me happy I'm like look how quickly I created this cute butterfly page as and everything I used was like at least five years or older I mean I guess when you've been doing this for so long you have accumulated stuff but it's truthfully also like the fact that I I haven't reached out to some of these some of these products now I just want to kind of add these lines I think it will look really cool too and we just to join that movement with the paper so everything kind of has ties in into that this category of of this so there we go that is my page I mean maybe I should have done this with like different colors I am very a monochromatic kind of art journaler I tend not to use different colors for things but I also did not have other colors because I told you I only have a few of these um, ones oh you know what I want to do is that, sorry before I finish I want to add a few splatters with the gesso so I find that that helps a lot like you can see the splatters here but they kind of got lost on the rest of it so even though there was white splatters underneath I found it hard to see them after a while so I'm going to just add, take a little paintbrush, add a little bit of white to my table here. And this is a Ken Oliver matte. I always have it listed below because I really like it. I'm going to add water and then mix it together to make a really liquidy option. You can also use like cheap acrylic, white acrylic paint to create this. And then all I'm going to do is just basically create these splatters and that will tie it all in it really looks nice splatters always add so much character to things so there we go this is how I created this page using old products and I really hope you like it and you get to just search around your room for something that is maybe older than or basically nothing from this year if you want to check a challenge that way I hope my prompt inspired you and if it did please hashtag me at karen's creative prompt and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like this video also i'd love for you to join my facebook group and if this inspired you to create something uh, please share it in the facebook group or on instagram hashtag me so that way i can share it as well on my social media thank you so much everyone and have an amazing day Bye.